Well, I think it's time now, Susan, for us to head upstairs. All right, let's go upstairs. Susan, we're now on upstairs. We're in Lincoln's bedroom, but I wanted to ask you a couple questions about our trip upstairs. Mm -hmm. And I noticed the steps seem to be a little bit higher than code today. Is that right? They are. There was no code back then, of course. So um, they, they fit the space, but um, they're kind of Lincoln sized. Agreed. They are a little taller than, than what we're used to. So well, maybe Abraham Lincoln size, but not Mary Lincoln. Size. Definitely not Mary Lincoln size. No, she may have had some issues, especially with her big skirt. Okay. The other thing I wanted to ask about, there is some space right at the top of the stairs there. Mm -hmm. I guess we decided to call that the sitting area, but it seems like there's a potential it might be wasted space, but I bet they didn't waste it. They did not waste that space. That is a, a good sitting area for Mary. Um, she did a lot of sewing there based on the pins and needles and thread we found in the floor. Um, it was also a chance for her to kind of keep an eye on the boys. A lot of times they'd be playing out in the street in front of the house and this looks out onto that street. So kind of childcare and sewing. <laughs> and as we're in this room now, I'm amazed by how high the ceilings are. Is this higher than the first floor? This is. This is about a foot taller. These are closer to 12 feet. The ones downstairs are uh, 10 and a half or so. Um, partially for the architectural style to make it look right on the outside, but also um, some practicality. The heat, you know, heat rises. So in summer, it was a lot cooler if you had a tall ceiling. The heat could go up to the top, maybe keep it a little cooler down here where everybody was. Well, speaking of the heat, I noticed we've got some nice windows here, but the Venetian blinds was not what I was expecting to see when I came in here. <laughs> the Venetian blinds show up in, uh, in 18, several 1860 photos. These are the only windows they show up in. So um, because this was a guest room, maybe they were trying to provide a little something extra for their guests. Gives you some ven ventilation, but also some privacy. Um, helps a little bit to keep the bugs out, but there were no screens. so probably not real effective on the bug situation, um, but very stylish. Venetian blinds have been around since the 1600s. They're in the room where the Declaration of Independence was signed, um, about the same color at one point as from what I know. But um, yeah, these were, these were just a little bit of a little stylish extra. This was the color at the time then? Uh, we think so. It's hard to tell. Obviously the pictures don't show you the color, but um, there was a mention of green blinds. Now we're not sure, sometimes blinds could refer to the shutters outside as well. So we're not sure, but we decided we would hedge our bets and make both of them the same color green. <laughs> and I noticed the wallpaper, is that an original design? It's a period design. We're not exactly sure what would have been in this room. Um, this is something that would have been very popular at the time. There is a little bit of red in it. Most people can't see that because it is so small, but um, it was, yeah, just something that was very popular at the time. Yeah, the red are very tiny dots. It kind of blends, it looks kind of brownish in terms it of- It does, it does. Where was the wallpaper manufactured at that time? I believe the wallpaper at that time, this might've been made up in New York. Um, it's a screen printing process, certainly it was available. Um, really, really nice wallpapers were made in France or China. Um, we know that some of the wallpaper, like in Lincoln's bedroom, was made in France. This, we're not as sure of. Why don't you turn around and tell us a little bit about the bed. The bed is actually our only Lincoln bed in the house. Um, it did belong to the Lincolns. It's a, an earlier style, so this might have been something they purchased uh, shortly after they moved in here. It's a little short um, for Mr. Lincoln. Uh, he may have had to sleep a little crossways. Um, it's only about seven feet from end to end, so that doesn't give you a lot of space. But it's called a sleigh bed. It has um, a really nice veneer of mahogany on it. Um, so it's a really good piece. It's a nice piece. When you say it's the Lincoln bed, was that a bed that he had before he got married? Probably not. He was living with friends or renting, you know, renting out rooms. Um, and so he probably didn't need to have any kind of major furniture pieces. Um, so this was probably something that they bought once they moved into the house. And peeking underneath the bed. Yes. <laughs> Can you pull that out for us? Sure. It's heavy. Yes. <laughs> 
That is a chamber pot. <laughs> that is something that every room, bedroom at least, had to have. Um, if you didn't want to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night outside, which is the regular bathroom location, um, or if you were sick or for whatever reason, you had a chamber pot tucked under the bed. Um, that would have been the job of the hired girl then the next morning to empty it. Probably not her favorite job. <laughs> I would think not. No. Okay. It makes us appreciate indoor plumbing now, doesn't it? Very much so. And speaking of that, what do we have over here in the stand as well? Okay, this was basically yeah, your indoor restroom over here in the corner. Um, it has things like um, your pitcher and um, basin for water, a mirror, of course, if you need to be shaving. We do have some, some razors over here. Toothbrush, this is kind of your sink area, I guess. Would have poured water from the pitcher into the basin, would have used that to, to wash up. And you say, I see the mirror there, so the gentleman could shave every morning? They could if they needed to. <laughs> Sometimes they didn't. That was How the often choice. would uh, Mr. Lincoln and other people of the time go into a barber shop, perhaps, and gotten a shave? That's a good question. Um, as far as we know, Mr. Lincoln never did. He would have shaved um, himself. Um, but I suppose there were some gentlemen that would go once a day. There might have been some that went just for special occasions. Okay. And, of course, it wasn't until about the time he was elected president that he decided to get the beard, right? Correct. He had gotten a letter from a young lady. She was 11 years old in upstate New York. And uh, she, this was before the election. And she said that, that maybe a beard would make him more handsome. And then the ladies could tease their husbands and their friends to vote for him because, of course, ladies still couldn't vote. Um, Mr. Lincoln wrote back and he thanked her for the advice, but he said maybe he would, would wait. He didn't necessarily want to trade a beard for a vote, um, but obviously he then must have changed his mind and, and grew the beard, but only after the election. Okay. Well, you're standing next to the fireplace, but it isn't a fireplace, or is it? <laughs> or was it? Well, it's, it's one of those things that uh, the uh, mid-Victorians like to... Um, you know, they always like to have a little bit of uh, extra flair, let's say. Uh, this was never a fireplace. There was a chimney here, but there was never a fireplace. They did um, install a stove, but it was so entrenched in fashion that you had converted your fireplaces to stoves that even though this was never a fireplace, they built a mantle around it just to give it that finished look. Tell me about the mantle then. Okay. Um, the Vic mid-Victorians um, were very much into kind of making things have a little bit more flair than they would have normally. So this was never actually a fireplace. There was a chimney here to attach a stove to, but there was never actually a big mantle around it. Um, but fashion was so entrenched that you had converted your fireplaces into stoves that even though this didn't have one, they put a fireplace around it um, to give it a kind of a finished look. So, and then speaking of finishes, um, this is actually plain old pine wood, but it had been faux grain to look like oak, so they, they kind of jazzed it up a little bit too. Were the seashells on the top something that, that would have been there during the Lincoln period? Yes, those do have a, an affiliation with the Lincoln family, probably a gift from someone. that We have a few more downstairs. Um, we don't have a lot of information about them, but um, they do have some connection maybe. Well, that makes me wonder, did either of the Lincolns ever actually see the ocean before they went to Washington, D.C.? I would imagine Abraham did because he went to New York City. He did, um, and probably while he was in New Orleans, he would have seen the Gulf of Mexico. Very good. Um, but Mary, I don't know that she would have... She was in New York for a while, so she may have caught a glimpse of it. Yeah. But, yeah. And the picture. Picture is a, a, another period piece. Um, it's kind of a sweet little picture. The little boy sitting on the, the um, sideboard there with a towel draped over. Apparently he has torn his only pair of pants and mother is fixing it. Um, the title of it is His Only Pair. So it's, he looks a little dejected. <laughs> okay, now let's move to these two pieces of furnishing. Sure. It looks like it's horsehair again. Yes, horsehair is very popular. Um, it's a good, solid, sturdy fabric as well. Um, gives a little bit of an elegant sheen to it. But uh, the fainting couch here, um, 
did belong to the Lincolns. Uh, whether or not Mary needed to use it if she felt a little faint, I don't know, but it was certainly a handy thing. Um, a lady could recline on it while still in her corset um, because she wasn't laying flat and she wasn't sitting upright, so she could relax a little bit. That uh, leads to an obvious couple of questions here in terms of fainting. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it sounds like they, the, the ladies were fainting more then than they do now. Is there a reason for that? The corsets. Um, if you had particularly tight lacing on your corset, it could cut off a little bit of airflow to your lungs, um, although tight, tight lacing wasn't very popular anymore, but it's still, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> what the ladies did for the men, huh? What the ladies did for their fashions, exactly. And okay. also, they're helpful because you're hanging a lot of things off of you. So you have kind of a steel cage around your middle, and then you've got all this stuff hanging off of it like skirts and petticoats. So it did actually help a little bit. I can see Abraham sitting here, laying here, <laughs> reading would this have been a good place for him to read um possibly although because this was the guest room it would have been mostly cut off from you know everyday use they would have shut the door and kept it kind of clean and dark you mean the boys wouldn't have been allowed in here much probably not much no the boys wouldn't have they would have had their own places to go <laughs> okay and let's get over here to the mm -hmm. dresser because there's some very interesting items not just the dresser itself but some things on the on the <clears throat> top here as well sure the dresser did belong to the Lincolns. Again, it's a little bit of an older piece, so this might have been something they bought about the same time as they bought the bed. Um, they have similar veneer on them uh, and similar styles, so some, maybe a first, an early house purchase. Um, as far as the items on the top, they represent kind of things that, that either they would have provided for guests, like a little water pitcher and, and water glass, um, a small hand mirror, pin cushion, um, and some of the things might have been more things guests would have brought, like a watch fob or the, the patriotic sash if they were coming to do some sort of political event. Tell me more about the watch fob. That <laughs> wasn't the, what I expected. The watch fob is actually made out of human hair that's been braided. This was a very popular hobby, again, for ladies. Um, they would, as they would brush their hair out, they would save it. Now, this was you know, nothing cannibalistic or morbid about it necessarily, but they would just save their hair and then they would twist it into thread and, and weave it or braid it or crochet with it or whatever um, and make it as a memento maybe if for a dear departed you know, family member, whatever, but it's, yeah. I it's, can just imagine kids today saying, Ew. It's kind of, yeah, it's not one of my favorite things either. They do have a bad tendency to attract bugs. So hair wreaths and hair jewelry. <laughs> Let's move to the Lincoln bedroom then. We'll, we'll go there then. Susan, we are now in the Lincoln bedroom, and mm -hmm. Lincoln as in Abraham Lincoln's room. Mm -hmm. And as I understand, we're looking out into the, in the front of the house here. And I know there's some unique pieces that you definitely want to talk about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Lincoln's bedroom. Um, again, the nice tall ceilings to go with the architecture outside. Also, probably just to make him feel more comfortable. Um, I mean, at 6'4", he needed a lot of space, but <laughs> uh, he was also pretty modest about things. So you'll notice that the, the pieces of furniture in here that did belong to Mr. Lincoln are, they're nice, but they're not elaborate. So we do have Lincoln's wardrobe. Um, it's a nice, solid, serviceable piece made out of uh, walnut. Um, it does come apart. The top comes off, the bottom comes off, all four sides and the doors come off. Um, so it could be transported if it needed to be. Um, and then put together again with pegs. We also have his chest of drawers, um, and we're back again to the little bit older style. Um, this would have been made probably the late 1840s, early 1850s, um, but obviously still a really nice piece. Um, not any of his uh, accessories, though. It's not his suspenders or his bow tie, just something that looks a lot like what he would have worn. Um, and then in the corner, we have his pigeonhole desk, and according to the affidavit, um, this was Lincoln's first desk when he set up business for himself, he said. Um, so it's a little small. Um, he probably would have had to wrap his legs around the legs of the desk to sit there with any comfort whatsoever. Um, but apparently it was, it was something he, he used a lot. Um, he later brought it home. He probably gotten a bigger desk at, at work. He brought it home and, and as far as we know, he worked on it here in the corner. Uh, there, 
neighbors remember seeing candlelight burning in these windows up till midnight, 1 a.m., a lot of nights. So this probably was where it was. On the, the windows, you've got curtains and shades. Mm -hmm. Would they have had shades to be able to pull down like we have today? They did. They show up in, in photographs from the 1860s. Um, they wouldn't have been necessarily spring-loaded like we're used to now. They would have had a pulley system. Um, but they were made out of cotton cambric, it's called, which is a, a stiffened cotton. But otherwise, they work essentially like shades today. And I'm intrigued by the hat on the floor there. <laughs> uh, that is an antique hat. That is not Mr. Lincoln's hat. We don't have any of his hats here. Um, and of course, uh, Mr. Lincoln was notorious for putting his papers in his hat. So we've distributed that there just to kind of show his habit. Would you like to make any comments about both the wallpaper and the carpeting? <laughs> my thought is, boy, do they like things busy. They did. Um, the, the fashion of the time was called <clears throat> harmony through contrast, and they certainly achieved that here. Um, if you want to count the, the blues as the harmony, um, they do mostly match. Uh, the wallpaper in here is the original pattern and color. Um, now this was reproduced and put in here in uh, 1988. But um, this is a French wallpaper that Mary ordered, um, we think, from her brother-in-law's store. It's from the Smith store. Um, and this is what she picked out. <laughs> we have the original pieces. Tell me about the fireplace and especially the photos that are above the, the fireplace. This was, once again, one of those um, fake fireplace mantles um, with, around a stove. Um, and again, this is the chimney was here. Um, it goes down to the front parlor, kind of give you the perspective where we are in the house. Um, and again, faux grain to look like oak, um, it, just to give it a little bit more flair. <laughs> the two pictures above the fireplace, we're not sure what Mr. Lincoln would have had. Um, so we've chosen some people that he greatly admired. They're Henry Clay on the left and Daniel Webster on the right. Uh, two congressmen that Mr. Lincoln greatly admired. In fact, Henry Clay, um, Mr. Lincoln eulogized him after his death. Never met the man, but had studied his, his speeches and his um, legislation and just greatly admired him. Was also kind of an attraction when he met Mary Todd and the, and the Todd sisters because they were personal friends of Henry Clay and his family in Lexington, Kentucky. So Mr. Lincoln was kind of drawn to Mary initially uh, because of her knowledge and, and familiarity with Henry Clay. So he's kind of our matchmaker in some ways. Um, and they apparently talked about him at length and decided they enjoyed spending some time together. So. Well, that is interesting. Are, I should know the answer to this. Are both of these wigs? I believe so. That's something that I can never remember when exactly they switched politics. Um, but I believe, yes, both of those would have been considered wigs. Okay. And the bed. This one looks a little bit longer. It is. This is a nice um, seven foot long bed. The posts are also another seven feet tall. Um, so it fills the space very nicely. Um, it's, it's similar to what Mr. Lincoln had. We had photographs of Mr. Lincoln's bed. Um, but it has not survived because it was purchased by the people that rented the home after the Lincolns left for Washington. And when they moved out in 1869, they took Mr. Lincoln's bed along with some of the other furniture they had purchased from the Lincolns and moved to Chicago. Unfortunately, two years later in 1871, during the Chicago fire, their house burned. So a lot of the Lincoln furniture burned in the Chicago fire, including Mr. Lincoln's original bed. Oh, to think about having that available today. <laughs> well, it, like I said, we do have some photographs of, of what has been marked as Lincoln's bed. It's a pretty massive bed with the four posts again. Yeah. So. And the bedspread. Bedspread, this is actually a, a reproduction um, of, again, something that would have been popular at the time. Uh, it's a coverlet. It's reversible. You notice here at the top, it, it does reverse. Um, it's actually made the same way the carpet is made on looms that um, they're called jacquard looms. They were originally developed in France and um, they can make these wonderful patterns. You can change colors on them. Um, and a lot of times you would have purchased your carpet and your coverlets at the same place. What do you know about the, the pillows that they used at the time? 
Um, most likely would have been goose down um, or chicken, chicken feathers. Um, very rarely would they have been filled with any kind of cotton batting or anything like that. Um, most likely feathers. Well, we're right here at the doorway to Mary's bedroom, so let's head in there. All right. Susan, here we are in Mary's bedroom, and I wanted to start this time with the mirror and the dresser and the wash basin. All right. Well, again, we have a little um, bathroom area, for lack of a better description, in Mary's room. Um, we have the wash stand with, again, the pitcher and the basin. Um, and then we have a, a little foot bath um, that would have been used for most bathing. Um, obviously, they didn't have showers, and we've never seen any evidence of a big tub or anything like that, although there were tubs available. Um, so this being Mary's personal space, she could kind of close off the room and do her whatever she needed to do as far as, as bathing. Um, hopefully without too many interruptions from boys and hired girls and everybody else. <laughs> um, and we do have her commode here in the corner. Um, and I'm sure she's not happy that I always point it out, but this is a really nice piece. Um, it is mahogany. It's, so it's a little bit upscale. Um, and it would have, you would have taken the lid off. There would have been a chamber pot just like everybody else's inside. But the fact that it has a little seat makes it a little bit nicer. Um, it's also on wheels, but I'm not sure why. I don't really want to think about that part. But when you have to empty it in the morning, do you mean you have to reach down and grab the pot and lift it straight up? Actually, the seat also comes off, so there is a little bit better access to okay. the chamber pot. And again, something the hired girl would have done most mornings if she had to. Uh, as I recall, though, you have said that they didn't always have a hired girl. Correct. I should Yes. When the hired girl was here, that would have been her job. Um, if it, there was no hired girl, that would have been Mary's job. So even the lady of the house has to do the, the dirty work sometimes. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't trust the boys to do it, I would guess. I would not trust the boys to do it, no. <laughs> <laughs> and how about the picture that's above the, the commode? This is uh, made out of human hair again, um, hair that ladies would have combed out not, or even cut off. Sometimes you would cut off a lock and give it to somebody if they were moving away or um, this was something that you did do uh, when people had died as a commemoration um, and then woven them into little flowers and created kind of a almost a corsage effect there. <laughs> Same yeah. kind of stove we've had in the other rooms Whoop. and then we've got it looks like a sewing table. Yes now you'll notice back here Mary did not get the mantle effect. Um, no, real, no one would have been in this room so she didn't need to kind of impress anybody or show off anything so it was just the very practical stove so as far as we know that's all she had there's no sign of a mantle any place in here but behind it we do have her sewing table this did belong to Mary again lots of pins and needles found in the floor um, some threads some buttons beads things like that um, the northern light is is decent for sewing uh, not as good as western or southern but if she was sitting in here and you know needed to do some quick fixes or something, this would have been a good spot for it. What is it that's clamped right on the edge of the, of the table? This is um, a sewing aid. Uh, we call it the hemming bird. I'm sure that's something similar they would have called, a little pun. Um, but basically, it is a clamp and you squeeze the tail feathers together, the beak opens, you can put your fabric in there and it just gives you a, an extra hand to kind of keep the fabric taut while you're sewing. And would that be a chair that she would be sitting in? Is that Possibly. Original? That does have a connection to Mary Lincoln. Um, it's a small chair would have been very nice for, especially a lady of her height, a little bit shorter lady. Um, you'll notice it's very low. And it does rock, but it doesn't rock very far. So she could have had some rocking motion. She was maybe soothing a baby, um, but not enough that she would have um, been improper and shown her ankles. <laughs> okay. And then... The dresser. The dresser back here did belong to Mary Lincoln. Um, as far as we know, this is something she would have brought back, brought with her from Kentucky. Um, it is a Kentucky made item. We've confirmed that with Kentucky Historical Society. Uh, they have another one made by um, a carpenter from the Lexington area. Um, it's a, again a little bit older style, so this is probably made about 1818, 1820. Mary was born in 1818. Um, so this was something that her mother may have actually even purchased for their home in Lexington. 
So she may have, have uh, kept it for sentimental reasons. Her mother died when she was very young, and, and um, so she may have wanted to keep that just to remind her of her mother. It's interesting because those are curved shell or curved drawers that you've got in there. Mm -hmm. It gives you a sense that maybe their woodworking skills were better than we would have anticipated, even in those early years. They were very talented people. Um, definitely craftsmen. Again, this is a, a tiger maple or a burl maple veneer on it, um, which would have been a little more expensive. Um, and yeah, the curving would have caused, would have needed some skill to create. What are the two crystal items on top of the dresser there? Uh, those are bottles that would have contained perfumes um, or some sort of scented oils. Uh, there is no deodorant, there's no speed stick at the time, and um, so people could get very um, aromatic, shall we say. <laughs> so a uh, lady might have used something to kind of combat mm -hmm. that as well. Well, we saw her foot bath here, and mm -hmm. when you're talking about this, how often would a family during that era have a have a bath, let's put it that way? Uh, that Saturday night bath night that we've all heard of is very much the case. Um, Hopefully the boys would have gotten baths more often because they would have gotten dirtier more often. Um, but generally once a week, maybe twice a week. What did they use for the bathtub then? Uh, if you didn't have a foot bath, sometimes you had a little bit larger um, copper boiler that it was similar to the shape and um, style of a foot bath, just maybe a little taller and, and bigger so you could have more water in it. Um, but yeah, it was generally um, foot bath or hand washing. You're not getting very well washed when you're using something like that, I would guess. And generally I, not. <laughs> I'm assuming lye soap is what they would have used? Uh, sometimes lye soap. Um, we don't know that Castile soap was available, um, which would have been a little bit less harsh than lye um, and, and still affordable. And then if you were really lucky, you had either an English or a French milled soap which would have been very nice. Um, something mostly ladies would have used. I uh, would have had maybe a lavender scent to it. Well, you're standing right next to Mary's bed. Tell us about her bed. This is a, a bed, these are called Jenny Lind style beds, still very popular today. Um, we don't know exactly what Mary had, um, so this is just a, a, a kind of a, a guess, um, but obviously a smaller bed, more fitting um, a lady. Um, and. She would have used this, um, maybe if she had a headache, she did suffer from migraines. So this could have been a, a space she could have come and, and rested if she needed to. Or if she and Mr. Lincoln had very different schedules, if Mr. Lincoln wanted to stay up late and work on a speech or a, a legal case, he could work in his room, Mary could come in here um, and rest in here, um, get up in the morning and make breakfast or whatever. So. No comments on their marriage. This is just a more of a practicality that Mary might have needed her own space sometimes. I'm looking at the one candlestick on the dresser. Yes. <laughs> and reminded that that was their only light source at night. As far as we know, um, there's no record of the Lincolns buying kerosene. Gas lighting didn't come to this house until the 1870s, 1880s. Uh, electricity wasn't here until the early 1900s. So, um, yeah, lots and lots of candles. Before we leave the bed, we have to ask you about the dress that's on the <laughs> bed. Uh, the dress is, is a, a period dress, something that would have been worn by a younger lady. Um, it's very short, actually. It's only made for a woman who's about 4'10", 4'11", so it's even too short for Mrs. Lincoln. Um, but it's made out of a, an interesting um, dye. This is uh, silk taffeta. And to get this beautiful green color that's still a beautiful green like this, 150 or more years later, they used copper arsenic. So, and that was an incredibly popular thing to do. Um, it's called Shields Green, Shields like the, the sporting goods store. Uh, Shields Green, and it was used in everything from wallpaper to carpet to clothing. Um, and it's still being used in rat poison. So uh, they discovered that it is, it is lethal. So it's not used anymore for anything else but rat poison. <laughs> well, I imagine there's some horrific um, accidents that occurred because of the material that they were wearing. Yes, if this was something, if you were wearing this and you would have had lots of petticoats and chemises and undersleeves and all that underneath it, 
But if you had a cut on your arm and you started sweating and you rested your arm on the skirt of the dress, that arsenic would go right into that cut. So, well, ladies suffered for their fashion. Anything interesting about these pictures that Mary has on the wall here? The pictures are um, actually, again, it's something that a lady would have done as a hobby. They are pieces of wallpaper um, from, you know, maybe a, a wallpaper book that were cut out and then placed on black velvet backgrounds. So we have some, we have these two lovely demure young ladies. We have a very amorous couple over here. And back behind me, we have a, a, a really cute um, little picture of a young lady passing a note to her beau <laughs> while her rather portly chaperone looks the other way. Huh. I confess that I like these much better than the ones that are made out of human hair. Yes, I do too. <laughs> and the wardrobe we've got in the corner here. Wardrobe um, is another antique. This one does have a connection to the Lincolns, although it is somewhat tenuous. Um, but it is a, another massive piece. It does come apart um, for transport if necessary. Okay. And useful. <laughs> Go back to the dress here. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, did Mary and her sisters compete fashion-wise? As far as fashions, um, I, all, all four of the Todd sisters who were living here um, at the time um, probably dressed similarly. Um, I don't know that there was a lot of competition, maybe a little. Elizabeth Edwards uh, was probably the most financially um, advantageous uh, advantageously uh, arrayed, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think all four sisters uh, liked nice clothes, but I don't know that they necessarily competed. Okay. <laughs> Maybe she waited until she got to Washington, D.C. when that side of her personality kicked in. Uh, well, yeah, I, Mary did like nice clothing and nice things. Um, she just maybe didn't have the money at the time. And um, I don't know that the sisters ever exchanged clothes. I, Looking at their pictures, they're similarly sized. I think they're probably all about the same height, so they may have. Okay. And anything over here, and I'm looking at the, the hat especially, and the, the book with the levered clasps. Uh, the, these are uh, just items that would have been typical of a lady's um, toilet. Um, we've got a, a nice little period hat made out of velvet and artificial flowers would have perched right on the top of her head on all that mass of hair. Um, most ladies never cut their hair, so they always had a lot of hair by the time they were grown up. Uh, the book is actually a photo album, a time period photo album. Um, we know that, that Abraham Lincoln gave Mary Lincoln a photo album at one point during their courtship. So that's just kind of referencing that. The ladies never cut their hair? Almost never, unless you had some sort of illness, and then they would cut it off to kind of keep the, the fever down, they said. Cool your so off. by the time you're in your 50s or 60s... You could have very long hair. I didn't know that. However, nutrition wasn't as good, so, um, you know, it didn't grow that long. It would break because um, you, know, you didn't have as good a nutrition necessarily. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one other question here, and that's the transom. Yes. <laughs> Transoms were here. Um, they were installed by the Lincolns. Why they are side to side and not up and down, we've never been able to figure out, but they are very functional. Um, they would have, uh, you could shut your doors, but still get some privacy, and still get some privacy, but still get some air then through the transoms. Um, get some light through the, the back hallway here for Mary's room, because it is kind of a dark room. Um, but they are only on the back hallway rooms. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've never seen a transom that opens that way. That's what surprises me. No. A builder's choice from what we can tell. Let's move to the boys' bedroom. All right. Susan, the boys' bedroom. Four boys. Yes. I know there was a tragedy during this time frame, but I'm wondering how even three boys fit into a bedroom like this. Well, three boys didn't use this bedroom at one time. So when they added on the second floor of the house, this was Robert's room. He got it all to himself. He was the oldest. And then his second brother, Eddie, the second, the second boy, had died when he was four um, downstairs in what had been their, their bedroom downstairs. 
um, Willie and Tad were born after Eddie died, so there were only ever three boys in the house at one time. Um, and when they added on the second floor, like I said, Robert got this room. Willie and Tad, the two youngest, slept in a trundle bed in Mary Lincoln's room that pulled out from under her bed. But by 1860, which is the way we have the house now, Robert was away at school, so Willie and Tad shared this room. So. They slept in the same bed together. As far as we know, yes. Um, you'll notice there is no source of heat up here, not even a stove in this room, um, partially because there's no chimney to attach to, but also partially because um, Willie and Tad being rambunctious boys of 10 and 7 years old, I don't know that that would have been a good idea to have open flame in their room. <laughs> <laughs> good point. Well, let's start with the things that are over here on top okay. of this dresser here, the books especially. I'm wondering what the boys would have been reading. Um, these were some uh, books that were available at the time period. Um, an ABC book, probably more for Tad. Um, the Passionate Child is an interesting, um, very moralistic tale about a, a little girl who, who disobeyed her mother and her mother tied her feet and her hands together and set her on a stool as punishment. Something that probably wouldn't go so well these days, but um, again, designed to teach. Um, we've got books on um, some of the early math, algebra, geometry, and biographies as well. That probably would have been more for Willie. What's especially interesting though is to see all the things that boys would have been playing with at the time. Yes. So we have marbles, we have dominoes, we've got chess and checkers, um, toy soldiers. Oops. Some of the marbles were found in the backyard of the Lincoln home. Not all of these, but some of the, unfortunately the, the dull ones, the clay that would have been just extras at the end of uh, the day for a potter. Um, they just would make some little marbles. Uh, they would play the marbles in the same way that uh, when we were growing up, we would have done? Exactly. They just okay. would have been clay instead of glass. I'm not sure kids play marbles anymore. I don't know that they do. How about the checkerboard? Checkerboard, uh, checkers and chess, very popular at the time. Um, we talked about downstairs. Mr. Lincoln knew how to play chess, was probably teaching his boys. Um, we've set up a kind of a different game, a typical boys thing. Um, you've got toy soldiers uh, battling each other across the checkerboard. Uh, that's just, you know, being silly. <laughs> Um, so those are not chess pieces, and my uh, guess was they were just no. toy soldiers. They're just toy soldiers. They would have been lead at the time. Um, these are not, but they're just they're pot metal, but they would have been lead at the time. Looks like they even have some artillery there. Oh, artillery and uh, cavalry, cavalry uh, foot soldiers, got the whole set. <laughs> Very good. And what's on this table then that's intriguing me? We've got dominoes. We've got some carved wooden animals that they could have played with. Um, the tail itself did belong to the Lincolns. Um, the, the legs, unfortunately, the supports broke frequently, so they were often repaired. Um, in fact, the last time Mr. Lincoln gave it to the, the gentleman to repair it, he just said, keep it. They were getting ready to move to Washington, so it, it stayed here in Springfield. And there's a pole in the corner. Yes, a fishing pole in the corner. The town branch uh, wasn't too far away, just a few blocks south of here. Um, Apparently that was pretty good fishing at the time. So I'm sure the boys did some fishing. Mr. Lincoln maybe even went along with them when he could get a chance, get away. Now, something we missed talking about when we were downstairs in the dining room was the game table. But since we're talking about the boys and playing games, I figure that's a good place to bring that back into the, the sequence. Sure. There is a table down in the dining room um, that the top of it turns and flips open to create a square so there's more space to play games and that space underneath the tabletop where, where you could store chess pieces checker pieces um, backgammon if you played backgammon um, probably not any dice games that would have been considered a form of gambling and we don't know that the Lincolns ever did anything like that but certainly certain board games does that mean then the boys were playing some games down in the dining room as well? They may have been. Dining room or in the sitting room. They could have moved into the sitting were room. Were they the kind of boys that had the run of the neighborhood? They did. Um, apparently they were kind of the ringleaders of their, their neighborhood gang, so to speak. Um, there were lots of boys and girls to play with. Um, one of the games that they could play together with the girls would be hoop and stick, where you take hoops and you try to run them down the street as long as you could. 
Um, took a lot of skill. I can't do it. Uh, <laughs> but that was something that both boys and girls could play together, as well as chess and checkers to some extent. And we do know also that the boys occasionally went over to uh, their dad's law office and were rambunctious there as well. They were. Uh, There's stories of them throwing inkwells all over the room, like baseballs. Uh, baseball was, was a fairly new game at the time, um, but very popular. Um, it's balls and sticks. I mean, you know, boys, boys like anything with balls and sticks. It works well. So. <laughs> Is there any truth to the rumor that one of the boys even relieved himself into his dad's stove in the law office? I've heard that story. I never. I don't know the proof of that one or what the citation is, but it's it's an interesting story and yeah. seems seems in character. Yeah, it'd be the kind of thing that parents would talk about with friends. Definitely for a few laughs. Exasperation, I'm sure, on Mary's part. <laughs> exactly. And then we've got very different kind of pictures on the wall here. We do. Again, we don't know what the Lincolns would have had in here. Um, so these are just popular prints from the time period. Of course, George Washington, always a popular uh, subject for anything, especially for, for a young boy to look up to. And then we do have a humorous little print over here called Double Fishing. Um, and it shows a gentleman who's asleep while he's fishing and some mischievous boys, uh, probably not much uh, different from Willie and Tad, are uh, fishing for his toupee. And they have successfully pulled it <laughs> off of his head. <laughs> Well, last item here, but we got to talk a little bit about the bed. Mm -hmm. This is, again, a Jenny Lind style bed. Uh, we don't know what the Lincoln boys would have used, but this would have been pretty typical of, of something that, especially for children, um, a smaller bed, again, like Mary Lincoln's. Um, nice, but not over the top fancy. Um, and then we also have a coverlet on it. Again, reversible like the others. This one actually, though, was made in 1853, and you can see in the corner blocks it has that actual date woven into it. And is this a period bed? This is a period bed as well, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I would ask about is the hanger that is in front here. What would that be used for? Uh, that would be for towels um, because you have kind of your little wash area. You need towels, and with there being two boys, they probably were hopefully some extra towels in here for them to use. Okay, well let's move on. Move into the hired girls room. Susan, the maid's room or the hired hands room is how you refer to it. Mm -hmm. What can you tell me about this room? This room um, is kind of an interesting room in that it's over an open back porch and the unheated pantry. So it's always cold in here in the winter, even with central heating. Um, this would have been a storage room when they didn't have a hired girl. Um, it would have been um, something that the hired girl would have actually enjoyed though, even though it's cold and it's small and it's cramped and probably full of a lot of extra things from the Lincoln family because she would have been, in most cases, she was a young immigrant, um, 14, 15 years old is the average, uh, from Ireland or Portugal are the two most prominent um, uh, groups that were coming. Um, because she had it to herself. So she didn't have to share this with three or four siblings. She had a room to herself, so that's not a bad deal for her. 14 or 15 years old, mm -hmm. not living with her parents. Correct. And is that typical that they would be leaving the home by that time? Very typical, um, especially if the family needed the money. Um, the girls were expected to earn their keep as well as the boys, and this was one of the best ways to do it because not only was she earning money, she was also learning how to, to run a household for herself. So a lot of the girls uh, would leave here and either go to a bigger house for more money or would go get married. Um, 16, 17 was a, a pretty average age to get married back then. How much were they getting paid? We estimate about $1.50 a week um, plus room and board. So that would have bought you a nice pair of boots. Um, a good, nice pair of boots was about $1.50. Um, but most of the time, if you were 14 or 15, it was going back to your family. Um, because in theory, you didn't have any needs. You had your room, you had your board. Um, if you were lucky, they may have even provided you with clothing at the house you were working. Is the wooden floor original? The wooden floor is original. It's the only one in the house, um, probably because this was a storeroom um, for most of its life, um, so that it didn't 
didn't get banged up. It didn't really need to be replaced um, when the rest of the house was needing replacement flooring. So this, this is the original flooring and it's the original color too. Um, some paint was found under the floorboards. So it's got kind of this barn red effect. Mm -hmm. Anything specific about the furnishings that you'd like to talk about? The rocker does have a Mary connection. Um, it's a little, there's a couple of spots that we can't quite entirely prove that's where it was, but there is a connection to Mary Lincoln. Um, that she may have used this one often to rock her babies to sleep. Um, we also have the base of this trunk set up. The story is that it was made by Thomas Lincoln. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Lincoln's, Abraham Lincoln's father, Thomas, didn't sign any of his work, so we don't have absolute proof. Um, it's similar to other things that have been documented as being made by him. Um, so maybe. <laughs> well, here's maybe the toughest question for you. Mm -hmm. Did Mary run an efficient house? As far as we can tell, yes. Um, she didn't have a lot of extra money, um, but it seems like everything that she was purchasing was well used. Um, they used a lot of furniture, as you could see, for many, many years, um, kind of past its prime in some cases even. The wardrobe is also a Lincoln piece. You can tell it's a very, very plain wardrobe, um, but if you need something to store your linens in, that's it works just fine. And then the picture that's on the back wall. The picture in the back wall, again, a period piece. Um, as part of her training, the young uh, hired girl probably would have been expected to attend church and read the Bible if she could read. Um, and so part of her training would also have been her, her moralistic training. So the, the lady of the house would have been expected to, to teach her good morals. And this is something that would help with that. It's called the morning prayer. We're not going to go into this room, but I know there is a small space for storage. You know, today we have so much of our room is committed to storage because we have so much stuff. Was that not necessarily a problem at that time? They didn't have as much stuff. This is true. Um, maybe out of season clothes could have been put there. Um, we're assuming like the cradle that the boys used when uh, they were young would have been stored there afterwards because it didn't get taken to a store and given away until 1860 when they were leaving. So we're assuming that Tad had been out of the cradle for a while, so they could have stored that in the little storeroom. Um, it's not a very big space, so it would have had, wouldn't have had a lot of things in it. Did they have a basement in this house? They had a root cellar. Um, would have been maybe four feet deep or so for literally storing uh, vegetables, any kind of canned items that needed to be cool, but not necessarily refrigerated. Um, again, a storage area, but it would have been a dirt floor, so you wouldn't have stored furniture or clothing or things like that. It would have always been kind of damp. Well, that leads me to believe that maybe there was problems with mice. There were always problems with mice, yes. In fact, we have a mouse hole on the floor underneath this window, um, and it it goes, it's the original floorboards, it's the original baseboard, so that's an original mouse hole as well. <laughs> okay, well, let's move downstairs. Speaking of food, let's go to the kitchen. <laughs> Bet. When we were upstairs, I asked you if, if Mary was an efficient housekeeper. Mm -hmm. Was she a good cook? She became one. When she first uh, was married, she was used to a considerably easier life. Um, she had grown up with slaves who had done all the work and the cooking um, and then moving into her sister Elizabeth's house. Her sister Elizabeth also had servants. So Mary didn't have to really learn how to cook. Um, apparently though she was determined to, to do that. Um, she got herself a cookbook that's still up at the Presidential Museum and Library, Eliza, Lesby, Eliza Leslie's cookbook, and she taught herself how to cook. Um, Mr. Lincoln was not a particular he was not a foodie. He was not particular about it. Um, and it was very so, he was also very bad about getting home on time for supper. So sometimes the ruined meals were not Mary's fault. They were more Mr. Lincoln's fault. Um, but she became pretty good at, at basic, what we'd consider Midwestern cooking. Um, corned beef and cabbage, venison stew was apparently a favorite. Um, based on the bones we found in the privy, they ate uh, steaks, T-bone steaks, chicken, um, pork, so basic Midwestern cooking. 
How about the stove? What can you tell us about the stove? Stove belonged to Mary Lincoln. She purchased it uh, in June of 1860, right after Mr. Lincoln had been nominated for the presidency, um, probably anticipating that she was going to be doing a lot of entertaining. So this was a very fancy, well, very fancy stove, I should say, a decent stove for um, 1860. Um, it cost probably about $20 uh, by the time it was shipped from Buffalo, New York. Efficient? Efficient for the time. <laughs> um, the st there's a st an oven in back. Um, the wood would have gone in here in the front. Um, actually, obviously a cooktop and some areas in front for heating and warming things like the irons when you needed them for ironing. Was it good for baking breads? I guess it was okay. Um, certainly better than an open fireplace. So like I said, the, the door back here with the, the oak leaves on it uh, would open up on both sides. There's room for a couple of trays or some loaf pans. This would have been a huge improvement, wouldn't it, from what they had just a generation before? Yes. The uh, original open fireplace was on this back wall. Mary, when she had the wall put in between um, the dining room and the kitchen, went right through the fireplace. Her sister said she ruined a very good cooking fireplace in the process, but Mary got a stove out of the deal, and I think she preferred the stove. It was a much more technologically, um, more reliable source of heat. There's some other things I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. The broom and this contraption. <laughs> broom, still, you know, your basic broom. Um, works the same way as it does now. Uh, the, the item next to it, though, is a rug beater. Um, when you have rugs like this, you would haul the pull all the nails out. This is a, a laborious task. Pull all the nails out every spring, basically. Take it out to the clothesline, hang the strips of carpet because they're only about 36 inches wide. And then you beat the dust out of them with these rug beaters. And there are different styles. Um, this is a very basic type. Um, and then when it was done, you would roll up all of the carpets and put them away for the summer because they attracted bugs, moths, and things like that. So you would maybe put down um, a straw mat or just leave it the wood floor underneath. Now the table that's behind you here, mm -hmm. I see there is a cutting board. Right. It's not a, it, it's rather limited in size for if you got a lot of things on the table as they do now for preparing food. Right. Tell me about some of the items we've got there. <laughs> well, we have a couple of different things um, that you know would have been typical uh, for a, a Midwestern housewife. Uh, we've got eggs, we've got some root vegetables she could have picked up in that root cellar we talked about. Uh, the door is just outside the, the main outside door. Um, we've got some fish maybe that the boys would have caught or Mr. Lincoln would have caught. Um, spring peas from either the garden or the market. The market was just a block away from Mary, so she could have easily walked up there and gotten peas that morning. Um, she wasn't much of a gardener, so that's probably more likely than having them in her garden. Of course, bread, you would bake every day or two um, to have that in the house. Um, you can't just run to the store, obviously. And then different items that would have been useful, spices, um, maybe some sort of uh, item stored in here, mortar and pestle. And then you've got the china cabinet. I'm right. wondering if there was everyday china and china that you'd use when you have guests in. There were. Um, there are different types that we found in the privy. Um, what we're showing here is kind of an everyday china, um, very basic, uh, again, another older style. This would have been popular in the 1840s and 50s. A um, little bit more elegant pieces. The, the plain white actually would be considered more elegant. Um, the pieces that we show, the terrines down on the bottom shelf. And behind you there, is that a dry sink? That is a dry sink. Um, it is lined with a galvanized tin. There is a hole at the bottom where a plug, a cork would have gone um, so that when you got done washing your dishes, you would have had a bucket underneath, could pull the plug and all the water could run into the bucket underneath and then go out the door and throw it in the backyard. Was there any ice that they would have had? They could have had ice. There would have been an ice box in the pantry away from the heat of the stove. So you would have had to step across the, the back porch to the pantry. Um, there were several ice houses in Springfield with, as far as we know, Sangamon River ice. So they could have gotten some, yes. What other items in here have we not discussed that you wanted to mention? Uh, I will mention under this, we don't know if this is what Mary would have had, but this is a very practical piece. This, this table not only is a work surface, but this, this drawer underneath tilts out, it's lined with tin, and it would have been used for storing flour. 
Um, supposedly it holds a 25 pound bag of flour. I've never tested it because I don't want to pull all the flour out. But um, again, just something very practical because you are making bread almost every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go and check the pantry and then the backyard. Well, we can do that. We are obviously outside now, Susan. <laughs> yes. And uh, I was just talking about going to the pantry. Where is the pantry? Pantry is this little room off the, the back porch, the open back porch. Um, it has shelving in it, um, maybe a small ice box that would have had things that were kept cold. Um, but they didn't need to store a lot of food because the market was just a block away on what was, Capitol was called Market Street, so it was, it was right there. And the box that's on the porch itself? That is a wood box. Um, it's based on a photograph taken of the back porch in 1865. So it may have actually been the Tilton's wood box, but it's a basic style for a wood box. What I'm curious about here is it looks like it's wasted space. Why would they have this open area in this porch right here? This could have been a very easy workspace for them. Um, they could have maybe set a table up out here if they were doing something particularly messy as far as preparing food. Um, the boys, the younger boys may have taken their baths out here. Um, Mr. Lincoln, in fact, there's a story that uh, Mr. Lincoln was giving Tad a bath and Tad got away from him. He was on the back porch and Tad got away from him and took off down the street, just naked as a jaybird. And Mr. <laughs> Lincoln was just laughing and he chased after him and, and the neighbors all saw it and they were laughing as well. Mary, of course, was mortified, but Mr. Lincoln thought it was all good fun. <laughs> One thing we didn't mention on the inside was any source of water. Well, obviously we're looking at the water source now. Yes. We've got two different sources. We've got a well over here that would have been fresh water for drinking and cooking. And then we have a cistern over here and you can see how it ties into the uh, guttering system on the house. And uh, that would have been used for cleaning. Okay. So when they were filling up their wash basins, which one would they prefer? So for washing clothes, they would have used the cistern water. Susan, you mentioned when you were inside that Mary was not much of a gardener. Was there any garden at all? If there was a garden, it uh, may have been over here um, in this area. We don't know. This is one area that hasn't been extensively uh, excavated by archaeologists. Um, so she may have had a small one. They originally did have a, a wash house here um, that was about 12 by 12 that they would have used um, to keep the mess and the heat out of the kitchen in the summer especially may have used it on occasion if they were making a lot of food. It did have a fireplace in it, um, so they could have heated up water and, and other items. Um, but mostly this would have been uh, just a backyard. What I'm especially curious about is if they had any kind of livestock or any kind of animals at all. Would they have had chickens in the backyard? They probably would have had a few chickens. Um, almost everybody did. You would have had a small chicken coop maybe inside the barn back here. Um, and they would have just been allowed to roam the yard, essentially. Um, that's why you have the fences around the yards. Um, they may have had a pig once in a while. Um, they definitely had a cow. Uh, and then they had horses. The horses were, did they have a buggy? They had a, they had a buggy and a carriage at one point. Mr. Lincoln would have used probably the buggy to go uh, on when he was doing the, the Eighth Judicial Circuit. Um, so the other one would have been used for the, when the whole family would go places. So we've got chickens, possibly a pig, a cow, and a horse. That's a lot of livestock for a small lot like this. It is, uh, but it was very typical of the time period. Um, pretty much everybody had that kind of livestock in their house. Like I said, the chickens would have been allowed to roam free in the backyard um, with a coop maybe in the barn. The pig and the cow, the pigs mostly roamed the streets. You knew which one was your pig based on the notches of the ears. Um, everybody had their own individual one. Um, the cow and the horses, if the horses weren't being used that day, the cow and the horses would have been taken over, over the 10th Street tracks, which were, were there then and are still there now, to kind of the community pasture land that was beyond that to the east. Uh, take them out there in the morning, let them graze all day, and then go back and get them at night and bring them into the barn. Would that be something the boys would be expected to do? Possibly. Um, the boys might have done that. Mr. Lincoln did that frequently. Uh, the hired girl would maybe have to do it. Or if they had um, a neighbor boy, maybe was going over to get his, he could bring theirs back as well. Was it a milk cow? It was a milk cow, yes. Susan, with 
the pigs roaming the street with the cows down the block, but they all come back here eventually with chickens roaming around the yard. It must have been a pretty aromatic place to be living at that time. It was, um, but that's what everyone was used to. Um, you had an urban farmstead basically everywhere. Um, everyone had the, the chickens, the cows, the horses, um, and it was all in the streets and you had outhouses and it was just, yeah, it was just a smelly time. <laughs> was there somebody's job to go and police up the, uh, the droppings in the street? Not in the street. Um, there were night soil men, that was their official title, that would clean out your privy for a fairly astronomical fee, obviously, but uh, that was about the only thing you would worry about. You used the manure for gardens, um, for your plants and, and bushes and things like that. So, uh, no, it was, it was just messy. <laughs> we're using wood sidewalks. Would that would have been what they used at the time? Yes. Um, most likely oak, that's what these are. Uh, and the setup back here is set up based on this 1865 photograph that we have. Um, not sure if they were gonna use this little area, the triangle area in the center for anything. Um, it has been an herb garden in the past, but that doesn't mean that's what the Lincolns would have had. Was it uh, also wood sidewalk in the front or, cause now it's brick. It was, uh, each homeowner was required to have some sort of front sidewalk, some sort of front access. Um, and it was up to you to do whatever you wanted. Most people would do board walks, those are cheaper. Uh, the Lincolns chose to have a brick kind of plaza put in, um, maybe just a little bit fancier. I don't know if Mr. Lincoln was anticipating a lot of gatherings on his front porch for political means, but uh, it worked out well that way. <laughs> and then I'm wondering about the streets and I assume they didn't have a gutter system at that time. Not really. I mean, the streets were, they were mud or dirt, um, maybe a little bit of gravel, but, and they were domed. So the rain would run off to the sides um, and they had wooden, um, not really gutters, but wooden retaining curbs. Um, so there would have been kind of a guttering system naturally. Was there a place then and when most people have, when you come in the house, you can wipe the mud off your boots? Very much so. Um, when you, if you remember back when we first came in the house, there was a chair next to the hall tree and that would have been so you could sit down, take off your muddy boots. Hopefully you had brought some house slippers with you, um, put those slippers on. And if there was a servant, the servant's job would have been to take those muddy boots and clean them up before you left. So you could leave with nice clean boots. Okay. Well, now we've saved the best to last, the outhouse. The outhouse. That's in its original location. Um, that is not the original outhouse, unfortunately. Uh, there were three different locations uh, in the backyard where we have found privy pits, as they're called. That is it's the last one that had anything from the 1860s in it. So that's the last place that the Lincolns used it. Um, this particular outhouse belonged to some farmers in Oakland, Illinois. Uh, and they were friends of the Lincolns. Mr. Lincoln frequently stopped by that house when he was riding the circuit. Uh, so he may have used it in the, at some point. It is a super deluxe model, as I call it though. It does have three seats, uh, small, medium, and large. I don't know that you necessarily wanted company when you were in there, but if you did, you could, I guess. <laughs> Do you ever get this question? Well, what did they use for toilet paper? We do all the time. Um, there was no Sears catalog at the time, so you used leaves, uh, rags, uh, and corn cobs. <laughs> Again, thank God for indoor plumbing. Yes, indeed. Susan, you've done a wonderful job of giving us insights into the Lincoln home, what thank it was you. like when they actually lived here. What I wanted to finish today is with what happened to the house afterwards. And let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. When the Lincolns moved to Washington, D.C., you know that even if you're reelected, you're going to be eventually leaving the White House. Were they planning to come back here? They were planning to come back to Springfield. Uh, they rented the house out uh, to the Tilton family. Lucian Tilton was the head of the Great Western Railroad, which was the uh, depot that Mr. Lincoln left from in 1861 over on 10th Street. Uh, so it's convenient. His house and, and his workspace are nice and close. Uh, and they lived here um, until 1869. Obviously, they would have moved out if the Lincolns hadn't been reelected. Um, and obviously, 
things changed, but Mary and Robert decided to, to keep renting the house out. Um, Mary eventually went to Europe. Robert got married and started a family and he was living in Chicago. So there were no Lincolns coming back here at the time. Mary's three sisters still lived here. So she still had a connection to Springfield, but she had too many memories and she wasn't willing to come back to Springfield. So they rented the house out um, in 1869. The Tiltons moved to Chicago uh, and they continued to rent it out. Um, the the uh, most notorious renter being a Civil War veteran, big Lincoln fan, Lincoln collector of uh, different items, uh, mostly Civil War based, but he got the job here, lived upstairs, and moved a collection of things into the parlors. And then he would have you know, people coming in and, and looking at his stuff, um, and he would charge them a quarter. But he felt he was doing a service for the family, so he didn't feel he needed to pay rent. Uh, Robert Lincoln uh, was in his 30s by then. He was, he was a grown man and a lawyer, and he disagreed and had the, the law on his side. So he kicked out that renter named Osborne Oldroyd, and that's when he decided to deed it over to the state of Illinois. He was the last Lincoln at that point. Mary and her, the, the other boys had already died. So Robert being the sole heir, um, he made the decision to transfer it to the state of Illinois for a dollar. Uh, one of the best deals the state ever got. <laughs> and uh, the state took over ownership um, and set up the first floor as basically a, a living history museum like we have now with that same renter then living upstairs rent free. So Robert didn't quite succeed in his, his uh, idea to kick that renter out. He moved back in. <laughs> And what happened, you've hinted on this already, but what happened to the furnishings? A lot of the furnishings, the Lincolns sold. Uh, they had a sale right before they left for Washington, just practical. They figured they would probably be buying new furniture when they came back, um, as befits a former president and first lady. Uh, so they put a lot of uh, things up for sale. They put some things in storage with neighbors or gave them to family and friends. Uh, so a lot of the furniture that was here in Springfield did come back, but most of the furniture was sold and, like I said, a good chunk of it was burned in the Chicago fire. We're getting in the time of the year when there's lots of tour groups in. Mm -hmm. how, many, how many people generally visit the home each year? We have about 300,000, 275 to 300,000 people go through the home each year. Uh, more people that just go through the neighborhood, maybe go into the visitor center, um, see the films, uh, walk around the neighborhood. So about 275 to 300,000 through the house every year. Well, it speaks to the eternal interest that the American public, in fact, the world has in Abraham Lincoln. I'll allow you to finish with this. <laughs> How important do you think this home is to America's legacy? Oh, golly. Um, well, I think it's, Lincoln is, is such an integral and such an important part of American and world history. Um, his whole focus, once he got to the presidency, was holding the Union together, which he did succeed in doing. And this house is where he started formulating those ideas for how he was going to succeed as a president. Um, but this is also a good place you can take him down off the pedestal and make him more real to you. This is the, this is the familiar part. This is, this is Lincoln with his shirt sleeves rolled up, wrestling on the floor and playing with the cat you know, in his lap or um, you know, helping Mary put the dishes away after supper. And Mary's taking care of the boys when they're sick. This is, this is the part that everyone can relate to. This is a family man. This is a Lincoln Memorial Lincoln. Again you've, again, you've done a great job telling us this story and giving us insights in Abraham Lincoln. Thank you very much. Thank you.